Hi, this is Jim Damschroeder, Chief Investment Officer at Gravity Capital Partners. This video is about the automatic walk forward out of sample back testing that's available in gsphere.net. This is a feature available for portfolio manager license of gsphere.net, and it can be used to test the efficacy of a historical strategy, uh, which can allow you to implement a custom strategy for a certain investor uh, and have you know, a reasonable proof source as to how well that strategy did uh, historically. Okay, I am going to log over to gsphere.net. gsphere.net is our uh, portfolio optimization platform that we use to you know, run any of our strategies that our clients can license to us as a software or license from us in a robo-advisor uh, implementation. And now, logging into the system, um, to create the back test, uh, I need basically two things. One is I need to set some amount of investments to, uh, you know, to invest in, and then we'll, we'll dial in the, uh, the investment policies that govern how that portfolio gets constructed. So as for the, um, the, investments, uh, the investment options, you could think of this like a, a, a buy list. Uh, I'm just going to import uh, maybe uh, – I'm going to use our, our select equity list. This is a list of uh, some story stocks that's curated by, by our investment team. And um, you know, so how can we construct a, you know optimized portfolio of, of these holdings and how well would it have done you know, historically? And to answer that question, we're going to open up our policy tree. This policy tree governs uh, how GSphere optimizes any portfolio. We could use it to make it you know, a more conservative, more balanced, or more aggressive approach. And you can see in here there's a lot of settings that you know, kind of uh, um, leverage this uh, you know, quantitative intelligence to you know, predict better um, and also kind of govern how the portfolio gets not just weighted, but potentially re-optimized and rebalanced. And we could also apply new like uh, risk management using you know, a stop loss protection. So uh, I'm gonna just retrieve a policy that I have previously set. Um, and I'm gonna apply this policy. And in it, um, just a couple of highlights here. Looks like we're going to re-optimize this portfolio uh, every five months. Let's go ahead and also rebalance this portfolio. I'm just going to highlight that policy to activate it uh, every uh, two and a half months. Now, also of, of note here um, on the, the stop loss side, we're, we're going to have a um, you know, stop loss protection so that if a position goes against us, uh, we're not going to go down with the ship. We're going to sell first, ask questions later, uh, and, and get out of it and live to fight again another day. And then in the waiting policy, you'll see all the, uh, the settings, you know, especially the capital market assumptions that are used to uh, you know, optimize the inputs for the optimization, which determines not just which investments to make, but also the, the proportions for those investments. Uh, one important note here, because this backtest is what we call a out-of-sample walk-forward, um, I do want to highlight so our, our, our sample data, and any user of the system can set these sample periods to be whatever they want. Um, you know, we support data going back to about you know, 1980. Uh, but in, in this case here, I, I'll go back on, on about a three-year backtest. Um, so my, you see my end date is um, uh, you know, basically Halloween 2012, and that's the same end date for both samples. So we're going to use this data in here to, to actually construct the portfolio, but then the back test at all um, you know, has to have a, a hard separation between this information used to build the portfolio and then the information we use to evaluate the portfolio. So our, our sample data we're using to build it, and then up here uh, in our observation data, this is the period of time in which we're evaluating the portfolio. And I, I click on this walk forward button, and now GSphere is going to automatically walk forward this portfolio. So it's going to build it here, 
and then it's going to walk it forward two and a half months, uh, reopt or I'm sorry, rebalance that portfolio, walk it forward another two and a half months, reoptimize that portfolio, and go back and forth on this until we're uh, uh, we've reached uh, you know, our present day. So I'm going to apply this policy tree. And this policy tree, by the way, it's, it's not just used for back tests. It's used to uh, you know, make decisions about how to implement a portfolio now. Uh, and it can be used to you know, automate the ongoing management of the portfolio. And that's how we can be used in a uh, robo-advisor context. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and, and set maybe a global maximum constraint. I'm going to set one of, say, uh, 20%. I'm not going to apply a, a minimum constraint because there's uh, some value added to be had in G-Sphere uh, using the logic of diversification efficiency and perhaps um, making some of these investments you know, not get invested in actually produces a, uh, a better footprint of risk return and diversification. So let's put that logic to work for us. And here in our stop loss policy, I'm also going to set a global stop loss where let's just say uh, we're going to sell out any position that loses um, 20% and maybe, uh, you know, one or the other. So, of course, you know, if, if both happen, it'll be the first to happen. If something goes against us more than the standard deviation of an, and a half of its, um, you know, trailing volatility level, you know, in, in a standard deviation, um, you know, one standard deviation captures about two thirds of the price movement, um, so it's it's got a reasonable level to use. If you use two, you you won't get it hit too often, except in more extreme movements. If you use one, you know those those will get hit with some frequency. Um, but it, the nice thing about the standard deviation based stop is it allows those stops to be you know kind of automatically adjusted based on you know, the natural volatility of that asset. So, uh, you know, assets that are used to, to you know, big movements, uh, you kind of put them on a longer leash, so to speak. Okay, uh, I'm going to set this to allow the, uh, um, you know, any position that gets sold off from a stop to participate in its subsequent reoptimization, but not in a subsequent rebalancing. So that gives it a little chance for like a cooling off period um, where hopefully that, that you know, position will go and, and, and find its bottom, and you know, if it warrants it, it'll participate in the subsequent reoptimization. Okay, I think I've got everything um, geared up here. We could name this portfolio, and I'll even spell back test right. Now I'm going to hit the optimize button. DSphere is going to calculate all this information. Uh, and then stitch the performance results together for us to evaluate, uh, and we can make decisions such as, you know, is this really a, a strategy that, uh, you know, that works? Does it have the right characteristics from a diversification perspective, from a return perspective, from a risk perspective? Um, you know, is, is it appropriate for, for my client? Do I believe in it? And then, you know, of course, if we're making multiple iterations of this portfolio, you know, how does the gearings that we set in here in that policy tree, uh, you know, how does that compare to, you know, any other iterations of it? Because um, with this process being, you know, based on that, you know, out of sample, walk forward, multi-period back test, you know, the, the results are going to be pretty stable. So if we, if we find, you know, one certain set of policies does better than another, uh, you know, it, 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 it really does indicate that that's a better way to, uh, to approach this going forward. Now, multi-period is sort of a, an interesting distinction, too. And, um, so here's a, a, a P&L, that portfolio. And um, I'm going to go ahead and click to show our details. Um, and this chart will, will now come back with all, all the different um, you know, activities that that portfolio has experienced since uh, since we started the back test. So we built the back test here. Uh, we, we and you know, each color segment you know represents a reoptimization. Then all the rebalancings are marked, and you can see periodically we, we did hit some of the stops um, where we, we we sold certain positions: Sandisk, Yahoo, Alibaba, etc. Um, and 
you know, overall, the performance that we achieved here is a pretty good indicator, you know, of you know how that strategy would have done in the past. Uh, we can apply a benchmark and test the results of that against a particular benchmark or multiple benchmarks. Okay, so you know, pretty favorably against the uh, the S and P 500 in this case. Um, we could also zoom in, uh, say we wanted to see what that portfolio looked like, uh, you know, after, um, you know, at, at the end or at the beginning or sometime in the middle, we just click on the right active instance. Now all the rest of the charts and graphs will correspond to that portfolio as it occurred at that point in time. And we can bring up, uh, you know, the risk measures, just reports, information on the returns, correlations, um, all this will correspond to that portfolio, you know, at that particular time. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching this video, and check out some of our other YouTube videos. And um, hope to see you around. Thanks. Bye.